AirPods. Love them or hate them, they've become one of the top tech accessories for Apple's crazy popular iPhone series. But just because something is popular doesn't mean it's safe. And since their release in 2016, there have been concerns that AirPods could be detrimental to your health. With the newly released AirPods Pro, it seems that claims about AirPods causing cancer have resurfaced. What's the source of these claims, and the panic that ensues? And what can AirPods actually do to your brain? Well, slip on those AirPods and listen close, because today, we're going to be digging deep and sound out the science and secrets behind these devices. We're looking at a topic today that involves a wildly popular gadget. This is meant to be an unbiased exploration of a topic that involves health concerns surrounding wireless in-ear headphones. We're not telling you not to use these devices. Pretty much all of us are wearing some sort of headphones all day, every day. We just want to dig into the topic and see what's there. And with that out of the way, Let's get into it. Merry Christmas! Grill, grill, grill! Guess what? I just finished my first day at the mall and I thought that a good boy, I'm, I mean, a boy like you deserved a present. Oh goody! Is it duct tape for your mouth? Even better. AirPods! What? I am not wearing those! You know how I feel about Apple and the trendy fashion technology. Wow, well, see yourself. I'll keep him then. So, so what's, what's the, the big, big issue? issue? Wait, huh? According to Business Insider, the rumor that AirPods and other Bluetooth headphones could cause cancer stemmed from an article written by Markham Hyde, techno-skeptic health and science writer on Medium's Elemental Publication. The article quotes Jerry Phillips, PhD, a professor of biochemistry at the University of Colorado, saying, My concern for AirPods is that their placement in the ear canal exposes tissue in the head to relatively high levels of radio frequency radiation, and that this is not limited to AirPods. Existing evidence indicates potential concerns for human health and development from all technologies that operate at radio frequencies. Phillips is also quoted in a Hype Beast article about the issue. Effects include increased cancer risk, cellular stress, increase in harmful free radicals, genetic damages, structural and functional changes to the reproductive system, learning and memory deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being in humans. Hyde's article cites Phillips mentioning tumors and other conditions associated with abnormal cell functioning as some of the potential risks. <laughs> Hyde's article linked these risks to a petition from 244 scientists urging the United Nations and the WHO to enact greater health protections from being exposed to devices that create electromagnetic fields. This petition is the International EMF Scientist Appeal, written by scientists engaged in the study of biological and health effects of electromagnetic fields, also known as EMF. <laughs> In the words of Elizabeth Kelly, the director of the International EMF Scientist Appeal, EMF scientists have serious concerns regarding the ubiquitous and increasing exposure to radiation from wireless devices and antennas from all sources, including the pulse digital signals Bluetooth transmits. The petition classifies these radio frequency radiation emitting devices as cellular and cordless phones and their base stations, Wi-Fi and broadcast antennas, smart meters and baby monitors, as well as electric devices and infrastructures used in the delivery of electricity that generates extremely low frequency electromagnetic field. We've seen the same cancer risk scare pop up for everything, from prolonged sitting while watching TV to eating bananas. Joe, you hear that? What? 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 Well, the actual parallels being drawn here seem to include a lot more than just AirPods and other Bluetooth headphones. So, what's the connection between wireless earbuds and all these other devices? To understand the concerns these scientists are raising, we first have to define electromagnetic fields or shortly, EMFs. This gets a little technical, so let's drop into another exciting episode of Science with Brew. Yay, science! To briefly explain EMFs, imagine that there's an invisible force field surrounding everything with an electric current. Your computer, your phone, you, the Earth, and Howard. Hello. And if we could see this field, it might look a little like this. Next to Howard, the field is the strongest that it's going to be. But as we back away from it, this field grows exponentially weaker. I feel pretty. Wherever there is an electric charge or current, there is an electromagnetic field of force that surrounds it, consisting of both electric and magnetic components. Electromagnetic radiation can be emitted at a whole spectrum of wavelengths ranging from low-energy long-wavelength radio waves to high-energy short-wavelength gamma rays. It's important to mention that light is also a form of electromagnetic radiation and makes up just a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. 
Electromagnetic radiation is perceived to be a very scary thing in mainstream media because some of it actually is. This harmful radiation is called ionizing radiation. X-rays, gamma rays, and other ionizing radiation have enough energy slash short enough wavelengths to remove electrons from atoms which means it can cause chemical changes to substances. These chemical changes to a person's living tissue can result in burns, cancer, and death. However, most electromagnetic radiation is non-ionizing radiation. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, and visible light all do not have enough energy to chemically change substances and harm living tissue. The worst non-ionizing radiation can do is excite electrons and thus heating substances. Now that we understand EMFs are on a spectrum ranging from harmless to fatal, let's touch on the other half of this issue, AirPods, and how they work. Well, that's Obvious, right? You grab your AirPod case, put it next to your phone, open it, push a button, and you're connected. I mean, that's the really simple answer, but how does that work? With Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a technology that lets devices like your phone and headphones communicate across radio frequencies by sending signals to each other, and is one of our aforementioned non-ionizing EMFs. Keeping in mind that radio frequencies are the lowest form of radiation, surely there has to be some kind of guideline for the level of EMFs you can be safely exposed to, right? There is. While every country sets their own standards for what is considered safe, most of them are based off a set of guidelines established in 1974 by the ICNIRP, or the International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. These guidelines were also last updated in 1998. That's more than 20 years ago, also known as an eternity in tech time, or visualized, that's the difference between this, oh goodness, and this. Oh, oh, oh no, oh wait, look at that hat. He has a hat now. I love it. It seems like technology moves faster than the research and legislation can keep up with. So naturally the question will come up. Are guidelines written in the late 90s still relevant today? Are they even being followed anymore? Is there any way to measure how much EMF radiation you're being exposed to? Well, some people tackled that last question with a little device called an EMF reader. An EMF reader is a device that detects electromagnetic fields in the area, specifically for finding wiring issues. Though they are also used by concerned members of the public to measure the EMFs produced by their devices. On the other hand, the values that EMF readers can detect don't really mean much. Electromagnetic fields can have their values swayed by magnets, and when we're talking about wireless headphones, it's important to note they do have magnets in them. All headphones do. Also, the further you are, the field strength for both electric and magnetic fields that can be measured by an EMF reader decreases. Oh, also, my research shows that EMF readers are one of the best tools to find ghosts that ghost hunters swear by. Who are you gonna call? Enter a unit called the Specific Absorption Rate, or SAR, a measurement of the rate at which radiation from a device is absorbed by your skin in watts per kilogram. The FCC gets SAR level readings using a test that places the device that's being tested against a model human head called Standard Anthropomorphic Model, filled with a mixture of water, sugar, electrolytes, and additives to simulate our squishy innards. Then places a robotic controlled sensor against different spots to measure the absorption rate. There are regulations on the maximum SAR rating that wireless devices can have. The exact values vary based on region. In Europe, the max is 2 watts per kilogram for the head and torso and 4 watts per kilogram for the limbs. In Canada, the limit for the head is 1.6 watts per kilogram per 1 gram of tissue and 4 for the limbs per 10 grams of tissue. And in the United States, the limit is just a flat 1.6 watts per kilogram for cellular phones. To be sold in any of these markets, wireless devices must be tested and found to not exceed these SAR levels. According to the FCC informational database, the maximum recorded exposure rate for a pair of AirPods Pro was 0 0.603 weights per kilogram. I'm sorry, uh, okay, have to nitpick here just for a second. Just AirPods Pro? Why not AirPod Pros? It's yeah, I, I know. The, the pluralization, I... No, I, but that's what they're called. No, I know. I mean, I don't work in Apple's branding department, man. Okay, yeah, all, all right, never mind. Let's compare that to the other devices. The iPhone 11 Pro Max was measured at 1.16 watts per kilogram in the head region and 1.17 watts per kilogram for the body. So the AirPods Pro gives you a little over half the exposure that this new iPhone would. But you likely don't have a phone constantly taped to your face. Comparing that to a few other wireless earphones, the Beats X by Dre registered a maximum of 0.461 watts per kilogram in the head region. And the Samsung Gear Icon X registered a maximum of 0.028 watts per kilogram. 
that leaves the SAR of AirPods Pro quite high. There is one thing I should mention here. According to the FCC, these numbers don't measure the average RF exposure that users would be exposed to, but instead the maximum possible exposure. Which leaves us with the big question. Are AirPods actually harmful to your brain? According to the FCC, the allowed standards for maximum exposure figures are well below the point that any adverse health effects could occur. And our brain is capable of protecting itself to some degree. A network of tissue blood vessels create a physical barrier that's called the blood-brain barrier, or the BBB for short. I'm gonna stick to BBB because blood-brain barrier sounds like some kind of Yu-Gi-Oh attack, or like a trap card or something. Ha! You're finished, Joey! Dark Magician, attack his life points directly! Let's get into it. Silly Yogue, you've activated my twat guy! Blood Brain Barrier! <laughs> you've got nothing on me now, Yugi! And that's where you're wrong, Joey, because I still have my ultimate monster, Karibo! No! The BBB lets important things like nutrients pass through while blocking out unwanted foreign substances like bacteria or pathogens, but in some cases can react negatively to wanted foreign substances like life-saving medicine. This barrier may be enough to keep most bacteria out, but it's not infallible. The BBB can be broken down by a number of factors including high blood pressure, high concentrations of substances in the blood, brain trauma, infection, or prolonged exposure to microwaves and radiation. And radiation, as I mentioned before, includes EMFs. According to Joel Moskowitz, director of the Center for Family and Community Health at the School of Public Health at UC Berkeley, more than a dozen studies have shown that the EMFs given off from Bluetooth headphones can permeate the BBB. We can't say with certainty that these devices are dangerous, but based on the research that has been done on similar types of radiation, there's good reason to think this is going to be problematic in the long term. But that's only one side of the story. Remember the letter from the 244 scientists? As business insiders Hilary Bruick pointed out, the appeal was in regards to electromagnetic frequencies in general. In fact, the letter in question didn't specifically mention Bluetooth devices or headphones. And according to the American Cancer Society, the largest studies on the kind of frequencies there are concerns about haven't found any direct link. The study that found cancer development in rats only found it in the brains of male rats. And these findings couldn't be replicated in other studies. But that's just rats. What about in humans? Well, for a proper study, you need a test group. And as the American Cancer Society itself put it, it's not clear how electromagnetic fields can increase cancer risk. Plus, because we're all exposed to different amounts of these fields at different times, the issue has been hard to study. Besides, I've done the research and humans are not rats. And according to the National Cancer Institute in the US, the Canadian Cancer Society, the World Health Organization, as well as the European Union's Scientific Committee on Emerging and Newly Identified Health Risks, there is no consistent evidence that electromagnetic fields can increase the risk of cancer. And at this time, the WHO has concluded that current evidence does not confirm the existence of any health consequences from exposure to low-level electromagnetic fields. However, some gaps in knowledge about biological effects exist and need further research. Maybe all the noise about this topic is just another case of our good friend correlation and causation. If we look at the chart for cases of brain cancer in the US between 1992 and 2016, we can see, wait, no, this is actually trending down, huh? So, uh, good news for AirPod users. To quote Michael Schulder, director of Northwell Health's Brain Tumor Center in Lake Success, New York, there has not been a major bump in tumors to suggest that cell phones are causing it. And we know that the Bluetooth radiation is less than cell phones themselves. But with all that said, according to CNET, it was recently found that some older smartphones may be emitting higher SAR levels than the allowed limit by several orders of magnitude. As such, the FCC will be reevaluating and retesting the devices. Like with so many other new technologies, against all research and evidence, it may be too soon to definitively say whether or not Bluetooth headphones like AirPods are harmful for you in any way. But here's the thing, there are electromagnetic fields, well, basically everywhere. It's too pervasive to really ever avoid. In the words of Dr. Michael Schulder, we cannot avoid radiation in our lives even if we lived a completely pastoral existence off the grid. But I get it, it's natural to be wary of change and when we don't understand something, it's easy to fall back into our hunter-gatherer nature and see that rustling in the bush as a lion. If you're still concerned, well, just don't use them. Just know that wired headphones will generate EMFs too. And if you want to wear your AirPods, go right ahead.
right in the eye. I don't want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no-good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake, 